Uh, good morning, Sumal. Great to have you on our program, The Business Detective. Can I begin by asking you what got you into business? Good morning, Dinesh. Pleasure to be speaking to you. A uh, few factors. One is, as you know, once I qualified as accountant, I had few options. One is to go to Middle East or to Africa. Yeah, that was the trend. Like today's trend, people want to go abroad. At that time, all accountants who passed out. On. Then when I spoke to some people, I realized that the job function is a very boring and no challenge. So, uh, and uh, at the same time, I took a important decision to get married just after I passed out. So, and exactly nine months, I had my child. So family, I had nothing, no capital, no money, no way to kickstart life in a very positive manner. So I uh, decided that at some point I want to do business. That idea I always had because entrepreneurship was and leadership was, I believe in my own way was my forte. Um, not management, but entrepreneurship and leadership. So that's what got me going. Okay. Uh, what have you accomplished other than the billions and the fame that you have got so far? <laughs> very, very sincerely and humbly speaking, I never got into business to make billions or billions and I have not made. But I got into business to me firstly to give my family a security and a comfortable life. And my, as I told at the first ever meeting with my partners and the 20, 30 staff I had at that time, 35 years ago, 33 years ago, I told them, I was 30 years old then, I said, by 40, I want to make $1 million, 40 million rupees to secure the business and the company. Having said that, on my 40th birthday, I had built Access Tower 1 and I had moved in and I had a very good operational business thanks to my partners, my friends and my leadership. Okay. How, how did you coin the name Access? I saw this in a magazine of a fr my friend in London. It was a nude calendar, you know, <laughs> and it went as Access Communications, that company. So I changed it to Access International and uh, that's how I got the name. Okay, very interesting. Uh, who are the three people in your life whom you admire and respect and how have they influenced you? Um, my father first for his integrity, his very disciplined way of living and very simple way. For example, when I lost water sage, he called me and said, I read the whole judgment and they have found you not guilty. So I said, Tati, they can find me not guilty, but I have lost the project and the, my ten, five, ten years of hard work. And that's a pro project I really did with a lot of passion and it was good for the country. I said, Kasip will see here, but he was also supposed to, I don't know, that time history taught us that he killed his father. But I have not done any things like that, but I have no, I felt, I, I feel very cheated because it happened from the highest court of the land. So this, uh, of course, subsequently I have realized 
the most important thing is to accept whatever is given and that i must thank my christian upbringing to accept it and move on uh, i don't know whether you read a lot what is the best ever book you read and have you used it as part of your management philosophy yeah i have read not all at once or not very deep deeply but i think the bible is the best book that i get inspiration from because in my opinion jesus christ has been the best leader to follow and all my decisions are on those principles of sharing and caring and been transparent and with the highest level of integrity okay uh, what are what characteristics or traits do you believe successful people have in common i think number one should be they should be trusted you must build trust you must be predictable that is your subordinates your colleagues your stakeholders should be able to predict your behavior that means on one day you can't be on a ba- in a bad mood and next day a good mood and another day some thing else you every day when they meet you your stakeholders your employees your suppliers everybody should know they will get the same response which is logical and fair in one thing a way you can make some mistakes but that should be genuine mistakes that you have misunderstood the situation or you have misread the situation but if every day you are a different person and depending on your bank balance or on your personal mood or your issues issues at home or something you change then i think that is the worst situation for a leader or a he- uh, entrepreneur because uh, then you have become unpredictable so predictability is very important for leadership and of course to be trusted and you in turn must be grateful in all your dealings have trust you and gratitude for me i i don't if you notice i don't use the word love the love is very flippantly used in this world gratitude and trust is more valuable have you looked up no not really but i have looked up a few leaders which i uh, really value nelson mandela lee kuan yew and uh, tiger woods you know in the international scene and in the local scene i admire few people who was on not fair to mention names because i i will be doing injustice by the others okay uh, unlike many other other business people you are a educated businessman has this has your seema really helped you in building up your business oh yes very much not that i go around flaunting it but i feel much more confident that i am a qualified businessman as opposed to a form grown without any qualification and i think my staff and partners and everybody are also benefiting from it because they can say a our boss is a qualified person okay how do you keep yourself inspired and motivated now that you have achieved so much one is my belief that whatever i achieve can only be counted for 10 15 years after i die because the most important thing in a in success is the sustainability and the longevity in sri lanka especially you will see some businesses don't last for more than two de- generations and they always blame the last generation it's not that i think it's up to us the first generation to set the standards set the values and execute them in an exemplary manner so that people who follow you thereafter will do the same it is over a period of time of course the greatest challenge is to manage the professionalism and the family interest so there is sometimes most of the time there is a conflict so those are the things now for example this year 
April 10th, I'll be 64. All my private enterprises and companies, I am giving the ownership to my son. Luckily, I have only one son, so it's a very easy decision for me. I have a daughter who will get a lot of my wealth, but the business, I'll give it 100% to my son, and I have come to an agreement with him that he will like me to stay as a figurehead chairman for my lifetime because I can't think of myself retiring because retiring for me is a no-no because I need to work. It's not for money. It's just I like to be challenged and I like to overcome the challenges. I, you know, I have never aspired for money or to be the richest person or those things have never motivated me. What has motivated me is achieving your set stated objectives, sharing it with your stakeholders in a fair and equitable manner and having, having securitized and having the strength to on a good footing. For example, Dinesh, when we started business, you know, our interest rates were 20 to 24%. If you remember, 30 years ago, bank interest rates were 24%. So at that stage, we never borrowed. And even now, I think we are started borrowing in the last few years because the interest rates have come so low that, for example, the ruby interest rates are as low as the dollar interest. So it doesn't make sense to not borrow because, uh, and also when there's a high tax regime, I borrow because then the, the borrowings take a lot of the tax, so taxable income burn. Another thing, Dinesh, what I would like to share for because a lot of different people will watch this program that one of the more important decisions I made was to go public. I went public for two reasons. One is to leapfrog with a capital infusion and make use of the war victory at that time, which sort of improved the business climate and the business confidence levels. So today I'm very sad. A few years later, who sacrificed their lives to bring victory to our motherland. Charity is something very personal and I, I don't uh, discuss it with anybody. It's like discussing my sex life <laughs> because it's a very private thing. But as a corporate, once I went public, I had a responsibility to do social responsible, uh, what we call corporate social responsibility. First thing I did was to appoint people who had absolutely no obligation to me, to the board as independent directors. And as you know, the day-to-day -day management, I moved out so that nobody can say that I'm interfering in the running of the company. And then I have given vision and direction, but never involved in any commercial transaction that is done by the directors and the, uh, what we call investment committee, which is majority is non-executive directors. Uh, what is your greatest fear about Sri Lanka going forward? My greatest fear is that we are lacking good leadership. If you see a company, an organization, a religious body, all will only thrive under good leadership. You can't in any way say that without good leadership, you can succeed. Good leadership and success go hand in hand. And that is proven globally. 
So Singapore, as much as is done well, it is also because of Lee Kuan Yew and his leadership. Because there are there are so many other countries. Malaysia had a much more much more resources than Singapore, but they are not even twenty percent of Singapore, and they are all over the time raising the bar and going up because of the leadership. And see, there is a that's the reason why I am putting my son into leadership this year and in the private companies and when he's ready to accept in the corporate companies, I'll do that. But because Lee Kuan Yew could have gone on for much more, much, he could have gone on till he died. He had his mental faculties and all were very alert and very agile. But he realized that succession is part of his responsibility. You know, in Sri Lanka, I see many situations, succession is happening, happening over the dead body of the founder, which is very sad because he, it's not the fault of the next generation, but it's the fault of the founder. Because if he doesn't create the succession and train them and push them and if it is not properly managed, the succession, all what you have achieved in a lifetime can be gone in a few, hour, a few years. Uh, as you know, there are many examples of that in people who are while alive, I mean, highly admired, but their organization has turned into insignificant after their death. Okay. Uh, my final question to you is what would you like to be remembered for ultimately? <laughs> mm, as a humble and simple man. Okay. Okay. And any final uh, words of advice for budding uh, business people? Business is very difficult, but very achievable if you are, have the passion and and if you work hard, but I have some advice for leaders, not think of your life or your, your career when you're a leader. You must think of the stakeholders, all stakeholders' future, especially our politicians make political decisions for the benefit of themselves than for the country. Country is a vehicle for them to, or it's global even. All wars have been decided by pol political leaders in the world for their benefit, not for the benefit of their countries. So I know it's easily said than done. They must, as uh, one, per one famous person said, I know what is good for my country, but I don't know how to achieve, how to follow that and win the next election. <laughs> That's a huge uh, conflict. And uh, our country also, uh, it has happened because everybody comes and promises something free. It is, it is not that from their private wealth or something, it's from the cross-national project product. They promised that. You know, I can, as you know, those days we were doing very well as a country when we got independence. But then we gave so much of handouts, which even a developed country can't afford. And today we are paying the price. But this dollar crisis, it's a 60 years in the making, you know? And to, today it has come to a climax. I hope we'll take this as a challenge and we'll have a bipartisan approach because all other problems can be solved. But if you don't solve the foreign exchange and the dollar price problem, we cannot move at all. We, on the dollar problem, we must 
work with international agencies for support because we have rightly or wrongly become part of the global economy once you be you can't have it both ways you can't have the good and not have the bad once you become a part of the global economy you have to accept all the crazy situations you know when i went public fitch rating was i thought the best agency they said our company is going to get bankrupt <laughs> you know so i said because we are a organization i knew for sure that not it was not they were they are going by global standards that construction industry is going through a bad time globally so i said this is the opposite in sri lanka we are just ended the war and construction is the first industry that is going to sort of flourish but this all these agencies and all are run by people who have not run a team boot equipment yeah they, they might be qualified but at the end of the day you have to face the bullet and you have to be in the hot seat to be a businessman or to make decisions you can't be academic and make decisions academics are uh, must stick to their role and businessman must be people who are willing to take the challenge and the risk and if you look around all these businessmen in sri lanka have grown from more or less nothing from zero to what they are today that shows that you have to have the courage and face the challenges to get ahead the my only only regret is that that love that forces you to com- compromise on a very balanced and he- healthy and a good life you and i had to sacrifice my health because my traveling and my work really had to take precedence but now the last two years the covid has done something good for me personally i had a occasion to take a step back and change my lifestyle i am not working on a daily basis i have very very good ceos looking after the 30 40 business units i operate and i believe that in a few years time my presence will only be ornamental so uh, thank you so much it was uh, great talking to you and uh, good luck with your thank you thank you thank, thank you. you it's a great honor to be featured with you Thank you.